morning. Good morning. This is going to be a video about the Einstein synchronization method and the question of whether it can re ever really be said that we have evidence that the speed of light is the same to the left and to the right and in all directions. I have been debating George Dishman at research on ResearchGate about this issue. I, I said, I can't cite anything off the top of my head, but I would think now one-way speed of light measurements are surely commonplace. Um, and he said, to make a one-way measurement of the speed of light, you could send a flash from A to B, measure the distance with a ruler, and measure the time with two clocks. All right, let's, let's go ahead and set up a space-time diagram for this, this scenario. We've got, this is point A and point B. And notice, um, I'm calling these point A and point B. Actually, you know what? In the example that we've been using, we've had these in the other direction. So let me, and the reason I'm putting A over here and B over here is because we've been arguing over a another example set up by uh, somebody named Stefano Quattrino. And he's got A over here on the right. Um, so to make a measurement of the speed of light, you can send a flash from A to B. So I will make a red here be A to B. Send a flat. Measure the distance with a ruler. Okay, we probably, ideally, we've measured the distance with a ruler already. So we've got a ruler in between these two uh, two guys. So A and B are basically attached to the ruler, so they're stationary points. Um, so in a space, so time going this way and space going this way, um, these, are, these are stationary points in uh, space-time. Measure the distance between with the ruler and measure the time with the two clocks, one at A and the other at B. Okay, here he's going wrong, the time measuring the time with the two clocks because they would all they would have to be sync they would have to already be synchronized okay so this is where we go wrong of course they would all have to be synchronized so let's go back before wait no because he's saying oops hang on a minute isn't that what we're trying to test um, use that so no we're not these are two separate things. First of all, you can do that by the radar technique, knowing that the time is a knowing that the time is isotropic. Uh, no, no, uh, that's not what we're doing at all. We'll use the radar technique first, not knowing if the speed is isotropic. Let's do this. All right. Say uh, so. So let's let's go back to Paul's response to me earlier, uh, where where in fact we technically know that they aren't isotropic. So we'll have, we'll have two parts of this. Um, the first part is going to be, um, here's, here's point A, here's point B, and these are attached by a stationary ruler. And he says the speed of light is 2V from A to B. So that means we're going to have array going like that and 4v from b to a which means it's going to be even so that's uh, so that's going to take half the time coming back um, so a is going to call this t1 it's going to call this T3. Um, B is going to call this point in time 0. Uh, so when he first gets this signal, that's the synchronization signal of 0. Uh, now A sets its time to this value. At this time, it's going to set T3 to, oh, I don't have enough room on the screen. So we've got T2 equals 0. Then over here, T3 equals, um, well, we're going to be setting it. But the assumption is um, that T2 uh, over here 
he's going to miss basically. He's going to say he's going to say this is this is a t t2 equals 0. That is going to be his guess at what t2 is. He's missed though. It's not it's not accurate. Um, he actually failed to synchronize the clocks here. This is going to be 3L over 8V. And this is going to be negative 3L over 8V. All right. And then we'll have a return signal here, again, moving parallel to that first line. And this is when this guy is going to have a measurement of, okay, he's going to have 3L over 8V, right? Because it's the it's symmetry. Um, so this, this time has to be the same as this time. Hmm. So he would also miss. He would also say, hmm. he would also say that this he would also say that this was uh, uh, 3L over 16V. And and he, when actually should have been down here. Hmm. OK, well, that's um, not what I was expecting to happen, actually. So uh, I'm still Still not quite convinced that there's no way to uh, to see this, but at this moment, I'm not seeing a way around this. Well, let's look at this. It says this has to be like that. Okay, so this is kind of a good news <laughs> kind of thing. This has to be like that um, because when we look at the synchronization procedure for inertial reference frame 1 in a Minkowski diagram, then we see from the view of inertial reference frame 0 a clear difference in time for A to B and B to A. Because, yeah, because when these things are, do move along this direction, is that what would be, uh, if these two curved this way, it seems, uh, you know what? He, you know what? He's got the opposite theory than me, um, because it's it's one or the other. Uh, it's not both. I think there are differences between these two things. I feel like I'm sure, because in his view, what? In his view, let's say okay. So this thing is moving with velocity v. So this, which had previously had a velocity of 2v, and this has a velocity of 4v, and this has a velocity of 2v. So now uh, the 2v, have I drawn that the wrong way? Um, 2v going this way, it ends up, I want to say it ends up being 3v in both directions. 3v, 3v. I don't know if I've drawn the slopes in the right direction though. So if we just change that to three to v. Um, no, I really need to slope them in opposite directions uh, so that this guy's coming that way. Okay, now we would have this 2v plus this this velocity here would be 3v. 3v, 3v. If we if we just did a Galilean, um, like a Galilean, uh, if we just did a Galilean transform on this, then we would have uh, the the relative velocity between this point and this point would be 3v. And the relative velocity. Well, no. If it, if there was a Galilean transform, no, it would be a Galilean transform for those guys. No, boy. Five, four, three, two, one, zero.
here. All right, let me look at let me just look at the result we actually got in comparison to v. What did we get? v Okay. Uh, dang it. Okay. The actual velocity distance equals uh, 2L, distance equals velocity times time, 2L equals, uh, let's break it down better, time equals distance over velocity 1 plus distance over velocity 2, and calculate what that is, T equals L over 2V plus L over 4V equals um, 2L plus L over 4V. So yes, 3L over 4V. So V equals 3L over 4t. Now, what would that mean to this guy? Um, how, what, how would he calculate that velocity? He would think the velocity was uh, 2L over t, right? 2L over, over t. He would think that the velocity of the speed of light was equal to 2L over t, and so he would set, he would set, or based on his assumption of the one-way speed of light, he would say the velocity was 2L over t, when actually in this direction, 2V equals 6L over 4t, and 4V is equal to, um, 12L over 4T. And let's go ahead and reduce those fractions so that the 6 over 4 is 3 halves, 1.5L over T. And in the other direction, we've got 3L over T. Okay, so now I, I'm starting to get a better idea of what exactly the difference between LET theory and uh, this would be Lorentz ether theory that people that are moving according to the Lorentz ether theory would say there is some absolute reference frame, but uh, but to a person that is moving quickly with respect to that reference frame, the speed of light is different at different directions. And this would be SR, um, which would say that the, uh, the speed of light is the same in all reference frames. So I, I did, I think I always kind of acknowledged that these two, these two theories were mathematically identical but uh, now I'm starting to see, okay, um, this this is this is an essential essential difference is um, in special relativity when this when this happens that this is zero three l over eight. Oh, I, you know what? This is not three l over eight. This is three two times three l over eight. This is 3L L over 8. This is going to be 0. This is going to be 3L over 4 or 6L over 8. I'm, I'm sorry. I screwed that up from the very beginning of the video. But yeah, um, this guy is going to see this, this as the measurement on his clock being twice the measurement on this image, even if these two velocities are different but now that uh, but now that I've started to say okay SR and LET are really really different 
I have some significant doubts that these will lead to the same results in every situation. I want to find uh, I want to find theoretical differences, looking for theoretical differences between these two things, because I feel a pretty strong uh, I feel a pretty strong commitment towards this one. It's not, and uh, so I, I would probably look for um, some theoretical differences between these two. And uh, I think you know what I just read was reading. I'll probably post it in a different video anyway, but in uh, trying to understand Minkowski, uh, I I saw that he did not think he did not think um, Maxwell's laws he did not think that Maxwell's laws are consistent with special relativity. Maxwell's laws are more consistent with LAT, I think. Uh, but Minkowski didn't. Uh, there was something in the in the introduction um, that suggested that Maxwell's laws were inconsistent uh, with special relativity. Were actually inconsistent with. Um, a constant speed of light uh, and the Lorentz transformations. Um, that's that's another thing. I don't think that this LET actually applies the Lorentz transformations exactly. Not if uh, not if we allow for the idea that this two v four v could get transformed um, or yeah, what, how did I have it? I, yeah, that's a Galilean transformation uh, that, that we had, we still got, well, it's more like three, three V. So we're looking at something that is really moving um, according to that Lorentz ether, the Lorentz ether theory, this guy is really moving at a velocity v this way, and he's and he's viewed from the reference frame of the Lorentz ether. That's going three v that way, three v that way, three v that way. But viewed from his own reference frame, it's going two v that way, four v that way, two v that that way. Um, uh, it's just the opposite, isn't it? Because from his reference frame, this 3v. Uh, okay, I'm a little confused right now about which direction. I apologize for that. But just, but from one reference frame, this velocity, the velocity is the same back and forth. From another reference frame, it's going back and forth. 2v, 4v, 2v. Um, so this, but this would be a Galilean transform. Um, that says so. So I'm I'm a little concerned that the that the, now that if this is if this is essentially what's the Lorentz ether theory is saying, then they're actually they may actually be using a Galilean transform that does not preserve the speed of light, and maybe that's okay with you that it doesn't preserve the speed of light, but it's. Uh, it's not going to be mathematically identical if it doesn't 